All right. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Gloria. I am part of the GetCoin team, and I'm here with Juan Benet from Protocol Labs. And uh, before we get started, I just wanted to take care of a little bit of housekeeping. Um, first and foremost, this session is being recorded, so you can go to our YouTube page at GetCoin Media and watch this session. Um, there's a playlist for the Sustainable Blockchain Hackathon that you'll be able to watch this video and all the other videos that have been happening during this hackathon. Um, second of all, if you have any questions, feel free to drop it in either the chat or the Q&A. And if you're watching on YouTube right now, you can also drop it in the chat there. I'll make sure that your questions get asked and um, make sure that one has an opportunity to answer them as well. Last but not least, uh, in the chat, please say hi. Let us know where you're watching from and what you're working on. Um, it's the best way for me to get to know all of y'all, and it's a good way for y'all to get to know each other. Uh, with that, I'll go ahead and hand it over to Juan, and we can go ahead and get started. All right. Uh, thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, really great to uh, be here and, and really excited for this hackathon in general. I think it's, it's fantastic to see um, uh, so many people working on, uh, first of all, like just regen tech and uh, aiming to make uh, sustainable systems and, and, and so on. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's really great to uh, be seeing this happening around uh, Falcon Green and, and, and everything. So um, what I wanted to do today is uh, mostly use this time to do kind of like architecture office hours to help talk to people about their projects and how they're approaching things and how they're building things um, and see if I can be helpful in helping you think about um, uh, your ideas and, and, and what you're building and um, uh, how you're approaching it um, with a special emphasis towards like giving you both good ideas for the short term and the long term, good ideas for the short term in terms of what um, what you might do to um, speed up your, your speed up your development and so on to, to get to a, a good outcome with the hack, but then also um, any ideas that are good long term in terms of um, what you're gonna uh, how how to scale what you what you're doing now um, before that I'm gonna just talk briefly about uh, Falcon Green uh, as a project and just kind of um, talk about some of the I, I think everybody here is, here is already familiar with the project in general so um, won't won't go into uh, too much detail um, but just to kind of uh, reinforce the long term goals of um, of these projects and and their potential impact uh, so I'm, I'm gonna try and do that in like Five to ten minutes. I'll just I'll just move pretty fast through that. Um, if people are interested in, in in that kind of discussion, I'm happy to happy to go through it. But um, wanted to kind of devote most of the time to talking about people uh, people's projects and so on. If I could uh, maybe ask uh, for people to just note say their name on the chat and just give a brief description, like a one sentence description of what you're working on, so I get a sense of like the kinds of things that you're thinking of building. Um, that'll be super helpful for me uh, when we shift over to the kind of um, architecture office hour session uh, and then we can like pick some of those ideas and and, and talk about them so maybe uh, I'll give you like 10 seconds to to write I think would this come in the session feed I don't know if people can are able to write through there Great. I mean, um, so yeah, if you're seeing the chat, I just kind of write your uh, write your name and what you're working on uh, at the moment, and so on, uh, just to give me a sense of like what, um, uh, yeah, what you're aiming to build. Yeah, and yeah. In the meantime, I'll, I'll just gonna gonna go through and um, share my screen and go through uh, some slides. Uh, cool. So I think uh, everybody's already familiar with the Falcon Green project, and and um, there's a, a a really awesome team of people uh, working on all of this, and and really kind of the the whole vision is that is there um, there there to make and so on. Uh, what I hope to contribute in in this in this set of slides um, is just a quick quick note about just sort of the potential and and how these projects can affect um, macro scale, can have macro scale impact, and can shift how um, broader industries work. And how uh, and, and really help decarbonize the world. Um, so uh, I think everyone in in this hackathon is fairly aligned about 
uh, climate change being a massive existential risk um, and about the fact that Web3 can enable green economies um, and uh, about the fact that Falcon could enable you know, the first self-organized green computing platform. This is one of the, the really key things here. Um, most computing platforms uh, out there don't have any kind of uh, in-loop um, structure like this. If we build a computing platform that um, within itself has all of the facilities to cause renewable energy to be used to power it and decarbonizing um, influence through things like carbon credits and so on, uh, then you can have a computing platform that just at, the more people use it, um, the, 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 the stronger and more positive impact uh, for the world it, it, it has. And if we can arrive at that kind of model, um, then, then these kind of blockchain systems can be uh, just tremendously beneficial for the world. Um, it's worth noting that Falcon is already one of the greenest blockchains. So um, the proof of useful work consensus um, does not waste work. It, it sort of creates this like really valuable, um, uh, useful work that ends up uh, storing people's data. Um, proof of storage blockchains in general are more efficient than proof of work um, because the actual work of storing the data is, is much more energy uh, efficient. Um, and then we do have an energy intensive process in ceiling, um, but that's in general in par, uh, on par with normal data center workloads. Um, and that's one of the things that, that Falcon Green already um, offsets through rec, rec purchases. Um, yeah, and, and so the, the entire uh, process of like buying recs and so on um, that the Falcon Green process, uh, project has, has built is like really awesome. Uh, we get to uh, measure the energy use of the, of the source providers and we get to then offset all of that through recs. Um, uh, so I think, yeah, in the long term, uh, we really aim for Falcoin and, and related projects to lead the charge on on these systems. And we really want Falcoin to be the world's fir like first self-organized green computing platform um, and to end up with this kind of very strongly um, beneficial env environmental externalities. Uh, there's a broader talk that I that I gave um, a few months ago um, uh, that goes into kind of how to apply this kind of thinking to a bunch of other problems. And so if it... I, I'll flag it here for, for people that kind of um, want to think beyond um, green systems. Uh, but one of the things uh, that uh, the core of that talk is, is that Web3 enables this mechanism design powered um, incentive engineering, where you have this, these extremely powerful tools um, that enable you to create incentive structures in both small and large scales. And this enables you to sort of warp the incentive fields that um, affect large scale problems. And using this, you can bootstrap into solving extremely massive societal problems. So I like to think of it as like, hey, if we, if we, and this is why I am super optimistic that Web3 in general can, can have um, super positive impact in, in specifically the climate change problem, but more broadly, lots of other problems uh, in society. Um, and it comes from being able to break down some large problem into smaller and smaller problems solve those with using incentive structures, and then over time scale to solve each successive bigger problem. So think of it, you know, we, we have this goal of like getting to a kind of climate um, positive, like th this green planet with um, without kind of like very uh, destructive climate change. Um, and we can break that down into, hey, at the very least, we need to get to a, a green industry. There's a bunch of other things that we have to um, greenify, but certainly we need to get most of our industries to be fully green. And it becomes a lot easier to to do that when you already have a, a very large subsegment um, uh, of a market that like uh, is green, and so we can think of getting there with crypto. So if if, if all crypto was um, environmentally positive um, uh, in, in terms of its outcomes uh, and it was fully green, then it would be a lot easier to use that as an example uh, against other industries and kind of create an incentive loop to uh, cause other industries to sort of follow crypto in that sense. Great. So then now, you know, how do we get green, uh, crypto itself to become green? Let's break that into a smaller uh, sub problem where, you know, specific blockchains like Falcon and others um, can can do that first, achieve that, create it again, a, an, an incentive structure where we uh, compete with other with other groups and so on to become the greenest uh, system and so on. And then that can sort of drag the entire crypto world into becoming green. Um, and great. How do we make Falcon green? Well, we can start with SBs, which is, you know, the largest um use of energy, uh, let's make source providers green, and then from there scale to um, then making Falcon green, and then from there, 
we can make all of crypto green and from there we can make all of industry green and from there we can make the uh the planet green so this is kind of the 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 problem decomposition and then using kind of incentive structure at every layer of the stack at every every problem scale um to then vault uh small scale actions into kind of medium scale actions into large scale actions and so this is where where i think web3 has massive power in, in being able to i'll give a, it gives us the tools to be able to do these kinds of things um i think you've, you've probably already seen a lot of the falcon green um structures and tooling and how it works uh but just kind of in, in quick um uh, summary again it's about kind of decarbonizing Falcoin to then be able to decarbonize crypto. Um, we use blockchain systems and and traditional um, energy measurement systems and and energy markets uh, to be able to do this. Um, and we lean on um, spe spe specifically try to establish a, a very transparent view into all of the energy use that Falcoin has, uh, map that to, uh, and, and then use that to drive um, renewable energy certificate purchases. Uh, to then offset all the sort of provider energy use. Later on, we can do other things like start applying pressure on um, uh, hardware manufacturers and others to to be able to to um, to drive uh, positive climate um, action in, in in those areas. But let's you know this is a great place to start. Um, and you can there, there's dashboards that you can see that that include our estimates, that are reports that sort of describe how we do this. Um, and then there's the awesome renewables purchase repo, which has all of the the, the records of, of of the purchases that have happened so far. Uh, I would love to get to a point where like this is happening automatically uh, from the blockchain, where as uh, you know on a periodic basis, the network just sort of triggers these purchases to happen automatically through smart contracts, and I like, think that would be that'd be a phenomenal place to be. Um, then beyond that, we what is uh, the Falcon Green movement is catalyzing change in a larger scale. Um, we have things like the Sackathon, we have um, summits, we have gr uh, grant programs. Um, uh, and we're building, we're also causing build outs of new um, renewable uh, energy farms and so on. Um, and for, for if you're interested in the grants, you can go check that out in, in GitHub repos. Um, there's many different uh, uh, systems that, that there were different programs that we're deploying and uh, many collaborations that we have with a, with a number of groups. And, and you know, broader, broader than that, we also want to bring a lot of awareness about both the potential of these technologies and want to kind of uh, create the structure and 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 uh, broader movement to enable a lot of other participants to uh, build their own projects and um, greenify their own products and industry and and so on. And so that's where things like the Sustainable Blockchain uh, Summit that's coming up in in Paris uh, next week, I think, uh, or I guess we're gonna have from now, um, uh, and, and other events uh, come from. Yeah, definitely. Like you're already part of the community, but uh, if you are hearing this recorded later on. Um, uh, definitely check those out. And you, you can also follow the project through you know, signing up for updates either on Twitter or um, uh, mailing lists and so on. Uh, one thing I'd like, love to mention is like renewable energy certificates are an example of these kind of broader class um, structures where, where you can create these verifiable certificates and create markets around them. And that's an extremely powerful um, swath of systems. And this this structure can be super beneficial for many kinds of problems that people might may want to tackle. Um, so I, I imagine a lot of the hacks that people are, are, are following kind of um, involve these in one way or another. And so, um, just, yeah, I think these are heavily underrated as a, as a, as a system and tool in, in, in computer science. Um, of course, certificates are a huge part of the um, broader civilizational landscape when you think about um, how property works, how property registries work, uh, how licenses work for all kinds of things from driving to, um, you know, uh, yeah, all kinds of certificates uh, govern um, our lives in all kinds of ways. Uh, and so far in uh, computing certificates haven't been as big of a, of a presence, uh, but now with, with blockchains, they're becoming a much larger presence. And so I would in a lot of cases, when, you, when you're faced with like a large problem, usually you can come up with some structure of using certificates and markets and, and, um, and, and good incentive structures uh, to cause some like really good activity to happen. Uh, one thing I'm super excited about is, is the, um, the onboarding of a lot of uh, re like geodata, especially recent snapshots and, and, and um, both, both like historical and recent snapshots of things like um, satellite imagery and um, 
topography information and so on uh, that lets us start uh, connecting what's happening to the planet to uh, computing infrastructure, to smart contracts, to, uh, to DeFi and so on. Because this is what then enables uh, much larger scale sophisticated systems uh, to then be based on practical uh, real world impacts. And, and I think a lot of this, those kinds of data sets are going to be assembled into kind of larger scale public data commons that are going to enable a lot of these kind of um, regenerative systems to be built uh, around around structures like these. Uh, cool. So I'm going to uh, pause there. I actually have one more uh, one more thing to, to describe. Um, uh, I, I think overall, the, the Falcon Group project has achieved a ton of impact over the last um, uh, year. Uh, and I think it it has the potential over the next uh, year or two to uh, really go from um, not only offsetting all our en energy use to get to zero, but um, instead get to be dramatically uh, climate positive, I mean, carbon negative, uh, climate positive, to get to a kind of um, some kind of multiple on the energy use that we have. So it would be amazing if, if Falcon got to a, a spot where we could be, say, like 10x green. So for all the energy that we use, uh, we're offsetting, you know, 10 times that amount of energy, uh, energy use, or like decarbonizing um, 10 times the, the the rate of emissions that we have, and so on. Like that would be a phenomenal place to be, and it would be, uh, it would cause um, uh, Thoughtcoin and our networks to be a, a really uh, good shining example for other networks to to then um, try to to um, model and emulate, and so on. And that would enable us to go to many other crypto networks and say, hey, look, we we achieved this. It is very possible. You should do it too. And if we cause that incentive structure to happen across crypto and we get crypto itself to become hyper green then from there there we can go to other industries greenify those and and so on uh cool so uh some ideas um for i, I think it's probably late in the hackathon um uh to to propose ideas but i, I think these are things that might be interesting down the ro road where uh, you could even think of weaving uh, green participation into the fundamental incentive structures of Falcoin. Uh, this is something that isn't, doesn't happen today, but could very much happen. Um, we could do things like create on-chain indicators of of how green Falcoin is, and then kind of create incentive structures to to optimize that. Um, and we could even start producing verifiable, verifiably green hardware, and then be able to sort of um, gauge which uh, which users are using that verifiably green hardware, and so on. Uh, great, that's it um, for now. And uh, now I'm going to turn it over to uh, discussing um, different things that people are are um, are working on. So uh, definitely wanted to be like conversational. So I, I see there are ten people in the session. Would love to kind of hear what people are working on. Um, and so if you can hop on over to the chat and maybe like say your name and um, just a quick sentence description of what what you're working on, that would be uh, super good. Um, also, one we have the option of like if people want to raise their hand, I can pull them up onto the stage and they can uh, ask questions that way. Cool, too, that'd be great. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So if you want to just raise your hand and let us know what you're working on and like what questions you have, um, that would be great. Uh, on a side note, I I think your talk about um, Cartopia is probably one of my favorite talks. So I will definitely encourage you all to uh, watch that as well. Or bookmark it. I dropped it in the chat so that you'll be able to do so too. So. Um, yeah, if you're working on a project, let us know and uh, come on up and let's see at least what you wanted, what you're working on. You can show that. And then um, if you have any questions, that would be great too. There's one that says, let's see, um, Jim C or GMC says, I'm working on a soul bound token that holds an environmental score to certify individuals um, or soul bound people on the Filecoin network too. Oh, that's super cool. Um, how are you working on that? Uh, or like, what, what is that? Can you say more about the, the structure? Awesome. I'm going to pull you up. Hold on one second. Hey, how's it going? Can you hear me? Hey, yeah. Cool, what's up? Um, um, yeah, thanks for the great talk. Um, yeah, I'm just working on, I guess, uh, towards the last part, you mentioned verifiable certificates. So. Um, I'm just using various stats that you provide from the Filecoin green APIs and trying to come up with like some sort of <clears throat> aggregate environmental score. 
um, and then kind of use a way to, um, yeah, kind of kind of automate uh, an basically an NFT or or a soulbound token that each of like a certification chain that each of these uh, storage providers can hold that auto updates based on sort of the stats that come from the API endpoint and yeah. And that's sort of my current kind of bare bone MVP idea, um, but happy to actually curious to hear. You mentioned a lot of like interesting um, incentives that I could add. That part I haven't explored quite yet. So would love to hear if you have any thoughts on how to make it a little more interesting. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, that's really cool that you're doing this. Um, so, so I think you can start doing things like create. Um, w- once you have people's scores uh, on, against some metric, you can start weaving that into participating in, you know, so, so you can use that score as a weight in some other function. Like you can, like the most straightforward thing is like you have some reward that kind of releases over time and your score is like a, a um, gets compared against other scores and you, and you can win some, some potential reward based on a probability. This is like how block rewards work in, in most blockchain systems and so on. So like an example of a, of a class of, of structures that I, uh, that we, we call impact evaluators, where you sort of evaluate impact against a metric, um, you normalize everyone's um, uh, sort of impact in a period, and then you uh, distribute some rewards according to that normalized impact. Uh, but you can also use it for other kinds of uh, uh, rewards or perks that are not um, you know, just like a direct uh, cash flow. You could, you could see it as um, creating kind of um, a social credit score. So, so think of... Um, how much uh, accolades and honors and awards and so on play a huge role, uh, like honor systems in general play a huge role in society in order to kind of draw attention to certain certain actions or um, uh, express gratitude over certain things and so on. So you can imagine things like um, uh, recording, having even just recording the history of which participants were the greenest in a particular period of time um, and, and tracking that over time could be a, a valuable thing that that uh, would create this kind of historical record of, of people's action over time. Uh, you can also use that to kind of uh, factor into membership into certain communities or, or membership into certain being able to share on certain assets uh, that a community holds. So if you think of uh, some community like a DAO or, or other things that um, share some set of um, resources, you can sort of grant access or grant uh, use of those resources. Uh, proportional to the kind of impact that people are having. So you can use this as a, as a, as a way to like um, pool some resources in the community and then grant access to or, or a proportional use of those resources to participants based on their their impact against this metric. So those, those are the kinds of things that, um, that can be useful. Uh, I think in general, um, we don't use honor systems enough. I think uh, throughout history, um, just social attention and, and, and admiration and credit um, and, and honor basically uh, has been tremendously impactful in in, in the in the structuring of many civilizations, um, and we just kind of and and even ours today, like there's all kinds of systems that are based on honors, um, even things like um, academic credit and so on. It's kind of honor based. Um, things like um, Nobel prizes and so on are kind of like honor honors oriented. Um, there's all kinds of like social leaderboards and whatnot. Um, and, and usually they, they kind of, because they're complex systems and so on, and, and, and they, they have all kinds of um, faults and so on, people tend to not want to reach for these, but I think they can be tremendously impactful. If, if you, uh, it, it's a very straightforward way of creating kind of a competitive landscape where party, the, the group, the, the groups of people that want to compete in that competitive landscape end up um, uh, producing significant impact. Uh, so think of like um, even, you know, having a, a running leader, leaderboard of how much everyone has decarbonized. Like imagine if the world today had a, a single leaderboard that showed like all the individuals and who has like decarbonized the most, that would kick off a, 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 a competition that a lot of people would, would, pr- would probably participate in. Uh, and especially if you kind of break it down into kind of regions or um, groups and so on. So people can feel, people, people ha- can have access to um, being one of the, uh, lot, like highest contributing members within their community or within their group of choice or something like that. I think that's awesome. Yeah, thanks for all the good ideas. Um, definitely going for more the the honor route than the reward financially kind of monetization route. But sorry, just a quick follow up. Did you say that you 
doing some sort of impact evaluator thing right now, or was that just kind of like an idea you were floating? Or? Yeah, so, so I think like the, um, the the standard blockchain block reward structure is is one of these impact evaluator things. Um, we are a, a number of us in in the in the Python community, in the PL network, and in in, in the Ethereum community more broadly, um, are thinking about these structures where you where you have some metric. Um, you have you have some metric that you care about. Um, you measure what participation in a period, and then use that weight to then assign some reward. Um, you know the classic example is the block reward, but you, you could have you could use the, the kind of structure that you have with the soulbound tokens um, with that environmental score, or like the change to that environmental score in a period. You can say like you know who's um, you can you can have some reward structure that including that honor system or whatever that maps onto like a particular time period. And the reason the time period matters is that it, it sort of functions as this um, ongoing auction um, that lets people, it sort of like restarts the game freshly every, in every time period uh, and lets people kind of compete again. And so it's an extremely useful strategy to, to kind of um, get a lot of participation and action against uh, a particular uh, KPI that you're trying to optimize. And, you know, in Bitcoin's case, it's kind of like just hashes per second, uh, which is not great. Uh, but, you know, you could do that into like, you know, decarbonization and so on. Very cool. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, I have a ton of questions, but I'm just going to stop and let you all talk to other people here too. Thank you so much. Sounds good. No worries. And if you, if um, no one takes the floor, please feel free to like just continue asking questions. Like that's totally fine too. Uh, one of the things that I really like about the soul bailed idea was that a lot of times the people who are, um, there are people who are environmentally conscious without knowing of it, like people who are much more impoverished or whatnot, they already are doing environmental solutions such as like reusing clothing or, you know, taking the bus or things like that, but they're not really rewarded for the choices that they make. So having something like that, that would uh, reward them for their choices or give them some, some type of honor badge or whatnot might be really great. And it's another great way to like onboard people into our, our whole Web3 ecosystem that might have been traditionally excluded out of it. So I kind of like your idea. Yeah. Um, awesome, cool. If there's any other questions, uh, please feel free to uh, raise your hand and I will bring you up. Yeah, on the, there are so many people that have not told us what they're up to. Uh, you, don't be shy. Definitely just whatever you're working on, we'd love to hear hear what's going on. Yeah. Yes, very much so. Um, okay. I know some of the ones that are in the stage too, so or in the audience too. So please feel free to like raise your hand and just talk to Juan about what you're working on. See, getting his insight is very much very helpful. Um, he has a lot of breadth of knowledge, so feel free to uh, pitch your project or uh, uh, give him some insight to what you're building and uh, gain some insight. Uh, what does Web3 Beach uh, do, Carlos? <laughs> yes. Okay, I'm glad you asked that question because I know and I saw it in speed. So, Carlos, if you want to raise your hand and tell uh, Juan about Web3 Beach, it's a really cool project. I don't know if you can raise your hand. Let's see. If there's somewhere where you can raise your hand and I can bring you up. If not, I'm more than happy to talk about it too. Yeah. So um, hopefully Carlos will come up here, but Web3 Beach is, oh, perfect. Yes. Okay, so yeah, I'll let him talk about it. Hi, Carlos. Hello, greetings from Utila, aka Web3 Beach. So we're a little, I'm, I'm on dad duty also. So uh, my, my, my daughter is going to make <laughs> an appearance. Yeah, uh, she sits in on a lot of my meetings. So yeah, we're Web3 Beach. I've been in the NFT space for a few years uh, since early 2020. And I've served as a CMO for different play to earn ecosystems and incubators and launch pads. And every step of the way, I felt there was something missing as far as uh, real world impact. Uh, and I've been trying to kind of coerce the people I worked for to do 
like social or environmental impact some way, right? So like a, a green staking pool where instead of the APY going to the, the stakers, it goes to a charity, for example, or just different things. And then no, no one really took me up on it. They thought it was, you know, like it muddy the waters a little bit with their investors and token holders. And so I decided finally, like I should just do it myself. So instead of creating a game that's gonna, you know, take people's time away from being productive in real life, I thought that we should start rewarding people for doing good in their local communities. So uh, for environmental causes and uh, social causes. So, uh, and create a DAO around that, right? So one thing that we've started doing is <clears throat> rewarding people for their participation in beach cleanups, dives against debris and uh, lionfish hunts. They're an invasive species here. And so cool. uh, ultimately we want to do an NFT sale that creates a treasury for the community. So the people that are working and creating the impact can propose the solutions or initiatives to NFT holders to vote on and deploy funds to. So uh, this last weekend was a perfect example. <clears throat> we don't have a fire department here or uh, an ambulance and two houses burnt down. And the, the solution here for fires is like you make a row of people with buckets right that leads to the ocean and down to whatever is being burnt so uh we're gonna do a beach cleanup that allows everyone to donate their earnings but the real powerful tool is that we're we're using something similar to like soulbound tokens where it's a, a non-transferable token that allows people to, to you know proof of impact so show proof of impact and then once they accumulate proof of impact, they get proposal power. So then they can turn around and go to the DAO and make a proposal like, hey, we should maybe start uh, funding a fire department or an ambulance or things like that, right? And uh, I, <clears throat> I'm ultimately not gonna have any control of the project in the sense where I, I don't manage the funds. I'm just kind of like the conduit for this project. Uh, the NFT holders and the council, so the NFT holders, <laughs> Sorry, and the fee holders uh, either vote to pass or or you know reject whatever proposal comes from the community, and then there would be a multi sig that releases the funds. So the multi sig would be like our developer team, uh, local community leaders, and other like um, partner project sponsors that are involved in the project. And uh, I am just kind of like the public servant that you know makes connects all the dots and puts everything together. So. Yeah, we're, we're looking at using NFTs and, and Soulbound tokens and DAO and DeFi. And cool. um, how, how has the cleanup gone? Have you, do you have like a, like a, a, a link for, or have, have you sort of like written up uh, those experiments yet? And kind of like how, yeah, how so, went so the, the beach cleanups is something that we've been doing uh, weekly for, I, I think close to eight years. I have, I have uh, videos and photos starting from six years ago. Uh, and it's something that, for the most part, only uh, expats like that live here or tourists uh, take part in. So that was something else that was very important for me to try to get more local participation because ultimately they're going to be the ones that uh, propose the different initiatives. And uh, it's hard. And, yeah. And it's hard to get the locals involved because basically you're asking them to work for free when they don't have like good paying jobs, right? And and it's uh, and then you're telling them, go clean up other people's trash, which is a little, if you don't have that environmental awareness, it's like, wait, what? Yeah. <laughs> Why would I do that, you know? Uh, but then we're using this as, a, as a, an opportunity to onboard them to Web3. So everyone creates a wallet to be able to kind of check. So we're not teaching them blockchain, we're just giving them the tools and having them use it in a way where they don't have to learn the tech. They just have to learn how to use it, right? So we're mimicking real world processes like clock in clock out of a, of a shift for example so when you show up i send them two tokens and then when they kind of finish or clock out they send me one back to claim the rewards right so this is just like like hand holding people through the process of you know onboarding web3 which at the moment includes like create a wallet you know store your seed phrase add a layer two chain to the wallet and it's not the type of it's. It, I can't just say, "Hey, go look at this," uh, you know, Coin Bureau or whatever YouTube, because the level of education really isn't there for us. So it's really intimidating. It sounds like a college course to someone that you know didn't really pursue school after sixth grade because we don't have a great education system here. So we have, you know, we're at this point we're just 
trying to create as much value as possible and onboard as many people as possible. And um, ultimately, the goal is that we start introducing crypto to the community and we switch our rewards to crypto. Yeah. And the supermarket's already working with me to start accepting crypto payments. Uh, we're going to bring a layer two ATM to the island as well so that people can cash out their rewards and you know buy their rice and beans and eggs and diapers and whatever's needed. And uh, yeah, it's, it's like a huge experiment and we hope that this serves for um, two things. Am I off? Okay, there we go. Sorry. No, no, no. <laughs> My daughter touched the screen. So we, we want this to also be like a playbook, right? We want everyone, anyone around the world to look at what we've created and go, wait, I can just copy pasta this process totally. in my corner yeah. of the world. Have you, you already have you given a talk about it? You, you should definitely give a talk at some point about, about this and how it works and, and the results so far. I think yeah. I, a lot of people would... the, so the Ethereum Foundation um, uh, invited me to, to apply as a speaker for Bogota in Colombia. We'll see how that goes. And um, I'm, I'm more like, I'm, I think I'm, I'm less of a talker, more like a doer, which is a little bit of a flaw of mine because it's like, I don't really sell everything myself. And I, I'm just like, let me create the value. Let me like show the real world impact. And then later on, like I'll circle back to, you know, shilling the project somehow. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think um, in addition to doing that, so, so it's great that you do more than, more than you talk in general. That's like, uh, usually the world has the opposite problem. There's a lot of talking and not a, not a ton of doing. However, you, you really also do have to tell the world about what you're doing and show them. And you have to like be able to tell the story and describe it and like make it uh, understandable, show them how it worked. Like not, not just kind of like the end goal and like what happened, but the steps along the way and the journey and the story and like what was challenging. Because that's what's going to enable somebody else to, to be inspired by your story, be inspired by, your, by what you did. And then go and replicate that somewhere else. And like you're saying, put it put it in a box in a way that in, in, in a kit where like people can go and like do this somewhere else. I think that would be that'd be super cool. Um, I'm reminded of like the the ocean cleanup project, which is another um, super awesome uh, uh, project for this kinds of things. But I think those those th there's there's something um, large scale here that could happen because at the end of the day, crypto is about coordinating tooling, um, uh, tooling for creating coordination structures at various different scales. So if we can. Uh, if we can create like a like a uh, a structure for these things that can just replicate across the world easily, like that could be super super impactful. So finding ways of like causing a community to come together and solve like one of these problems, I think could be could be really good. It could be around like just kind of tilting action against some problem. Like people notice a problem, they can like propose going to like do a cleanup, and then they get enough kind of like agreement that once everyone commits, then then you know people go and do it and and whatnot. And people, yeah. you know, there's there's, a, there's also possibilities of like retroactive rewards for things like what sometimes people see. Oh wow, that that was really awesome! I wish I could have done it. I wasn't aware that that happened at that time. And then it, having people give the ability to like retroactively in the future go back and reward that activity, I think could be could be really good. Yeah. So I I was thinking about doing that with the people that went to help these families with with the basically water buckets to put out the fires. So in in a sense, it's like. To me, that sh that sh represents like people that care for their community and the, the well-being and the livelihood of, of their everyone in their surroundings, right? So, I thought they they should get one of these non non transferable tokens, which is a uh, proof of impact, you know, as far as the community, and then they would now have gone through the onboarding process to Web three, but now understand that okay, so now because I participated in this event that is based, you know, good for the community, now I can propose something like you know, the obvious connection there would be a fire department, right? So we have like a, an old fire truck that no one's ever used and uh, fire gear. And we have a volunteer, um, we have volunteers for a fire department. We don't actually have you know, paid firemen, but we have a lot of expats who are firemen and they're interested in doing something. It's just like, there's no funding for it. And there's no way, like it, it's difficult for a community to start a fire department because then ultimately it feels like, should I be consulting with the government at some point? You know, like how does this actually work? So we're we're trying to figure out a lot of random things as we go. Yeah. Cool. I think one of the beauties of like where we are in Web three is that like we're realizing the power of like coordinating together to solve bigger solutions and kind of like 
not overstepping the government, but kind of just like leading the process where the government is kind of lagging behind. And one of the things I think about was when we, there was like the great garbage patch that like, I can't remember who, but I feel like it was like Mark Rober, one of the YouTubers that um, decided to like get together and say like, none of the countries are dealing with this. So we're just gonna raise some funds and like clean this all up. And I feel like solutions like that are gonna be I mean, it's really easy to do in crypto where you like raise the funds and start a DAO and like create some jobs and like go ahead and take over it. Um, and I feel like those are going to be the things that are really going to drive us into the future. It's not going to be really government states that are saying like, yes, you can do this or no, you can't do this. It's going to be, you know, DAOs that are saying we have the funds, let's do this and let's all benefit from it. And I think that's going to be like the major shift that I'm the most excited to see. So, uh, yeah, I I, I totally agree with that. So I've been posting a lot about this project in our community groups here. And uh, right away, the mayor called me into the office. And <laughs> it felt like the school principal calling you in, you know, like over the speaker. And uh, I was really nervous about it. And, and we had a chat and he just wanted to clarify what the what the intentions were. And um, I had to I had to really reassure him that it's like we're not trying to show up the government. We're not trying to like overstep our boundaries. We just feel that when something goes wrong, it's really easy for everyone to point a finger at the government and say, why didn't you prevent this or why couldn't you? But realistically, we also have the power to take actions to create our own you know, preventative measures or our own solutions to things and then present them to the government and go like, hey, like this is an example of what could be done if, for example, there was better legislature for crypto, right? There was a, like a better understanding and, and people were more didn't feel like this is a shady world, right? It's like, hey, this is actually a really powerful tool. It's not just like number go up on a on something you buy, right? It's is actually like the underlying tech is really powerful and has the potential to really revolutionize how systems work and how, you know, f rate f funds are raised, for example, right? For something that maybe the government would take years to do because of, you know, red tape and it has to get approved by so many people, but a small agile team of citizens could do this in a couple of months, for example. Awesome. Well, Carlos, I don't want to cut you off too much, but I do want to talk to the other projects that are also pitching um, or have Thank ideas. you so much. I really appreciate the time. It's it's uh, it's yeah. always so cool, you know, uh, seeing other people that are doing really great stuff and being able to share a little bit because uh, I'm on an island and it feels really lonely because there's not a lot of Web3 people here. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, with the magic of the internet and looking forward to watching your talk. Uh, uh, definitely go go do that in Bogota. Yeah, uh, for right. sure. Great to meet you. Cool. Take care. Thank you so much. Uh, all right. Bye -bye. So if there are any other uh, projects that also would love like some insight from Juan, I know that there's a couple in the chat that have been discussed. If you want to raise your hand, um, please feel free um, to... Uh, Apparently, Scott Moore in the chat is working on he's teaching kids crypto by giving them assignments every day, and then they turn it in, and they can get tokens and redeem it for games and fridges and snacks, which is amazing. That is phenomenal. Um, when a long time ago, I had like this whole project that was all about world schooling, like letting kids travel the world and like earn like their academic tokens or certificates by um, turning in assignments and like that correlated it so like learning about romans by visiting the Colosseum or something like that um and so i absolutely love this whole idea about having like uh, education pieces um, brought into it too because i think that's super important yeah it's great i i think that there's a lot that where um there's a lot of the intersection of education and blockchain systems uh everything from you know straightforward credentialing of like what people know um what are the things that they've like have demonstrated they know to how, how do you match that to problems to solve and so on um, to then kind of incentive structures for um, teaching and explaining things and producing materials um, and think about all of the economic flows in, in making explanatory material and making, making assessments and making um, educational tools. Um, and then later kind of like creating structure coordination structures for groups to come together and learn mater material together. Because usually um, one of the big things that schools tend to do is just um, create a social structure by which a group of people are all learning roughly the same things around roughly the same time, uh, which 
creates this very good resonance structure where people that are trying to understand the same kind of thing uh, at around the same time can struggle with that together and kind of can figure things out together. Um, and so uh, one of the things that, that one of the downsides in, in traditional schooling systems is that there's like, it is, it's not very mastery oriented or interest oriented. And so you end up with like, um, you know, a small group learning a ton of things together at the same time. And they could be at like widely different spots or different interest sets. And so one of the things that could be super interesting is like, how do you take the freedom of inter of forming small interest groups in the internet and you couple that with like figuring out where in the learning journey um, are you and try to like match people up roughly around the same, you know, um, same area to then be kind of like have like precisely like the right cohort to to be able to learn learn really, really well with and really, really quickly with and, and so on. And then there's a whole other part around just kind of helping create uh, motivation structures to, to learn things, uh, with other groups and, and so on. Um, there's a lot of things that are like super interesting and motivating. Um, and then there are other things that, uh, people are not that interested and motivated in learning. And so often just creating, um, group projects or, or group things or, or some, um, uh, challenge that people have to, to solve tend to be like a really good, uh, motivator tool to then like help people along the way, kind of learn a lot of things. So I think all of these kinds of things are ripe to be experimented with, with, blockchain systems yeah with the system that i had created it was more like a, with traditional grades you know you have to test english math science you know everything grade three and then you can move on to grade four which doesn't make sense for people who like let's say read at a seventh grade level and then work at a fifth grade level and whatnot so ours were much more decentralized where it lined up with the international baccalaureate like topics and you did a lesson in that topic but you could do the lesson all the way up to you know post high school. Yeah, like that like the 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 very granular mastery based learning. Yeah. Yeah. Um Khan uh, Sal Khan from Khan Academy has like this great saying of um kind of like Swiss cheese education. Like the, the modern education system kind of promotes this Swiss cheese understanding where people have huge holes and they're sort of like trying to build up knowledge on top of those holes and it kind yeah. of like doesn't work. And in reality what you should be doing is just waiting until like um letting people like really develop math deep mastery at every layer and build strong foundations to, to, love, to build on top of. Definitely. All right. Awesome. All right. I'm going to have to head out very soon, but uh, Corey, thank you so much for, for, uh, uh, for this and for having me. Uh, great to be here with, with everyone. Yeah. Thank you so much, Juan, for uh, taking the time to talk to us. Again, I dropped the link uh, for the talk in the chat, so please go ahead and watch that. And then the Sustainable Blockchain Hackathon is happening the 22nd and the 23rd of July in Paris. So we're looking forward to seeing all your projects there. Um, by that time, all the judging will be happening and we'll be announcing the winners. So you can take a look and watch. I think, is it gonna be live streamed one, two, the talks? Of this? Who knows? I'll say yes and I'll get in trouble later. <laughs> so hopefully you can watch them there. If not, you can watch the talks later. But thank you so much, Juan, for your time. I really appreciate it. And we're gonna go ahead and close the session and we'll talk to you all again later. All right, bye everyone.